Hi everybody, Chris Hardwick here, longtime speedcuber, and I'm here today to tell you about the 4x4 cube, the permutation parity case. So this video is meant for beginners to the 4x4. If you're learning how to solve it and you've come across this case here where I've got, it, I'm trying to solve my 4x4 like a 3x3, but I've got what looks like an edge block here and an edge block here swapped and everything else looks done, then this video is going to go over how that algorithm works and for those who are just interested in knowing a little bit more about why this case happens or a way to fix it or how to think of it, this might also be interesting as well. But so basically what I want to do before I start talking about this case, um, well, actually here, let me just show you. So the algorithm that I use is, is this one. So I do R2, U2, R2, wide U2, R2, and then you can do just this inner U2 and that solves the case. So that's a pretty common algorithm. A lot of people use it. Uh, I independently discovered this algorithm in 1998 when I first started, but to be honest, a lot of people did. Uh, and I'll show you the thought process that we all pretty much used in order to sort of come up with that case. And in order to know where that case comes from, it helps to look at the three by three for a second. So normal three by three cube here. There's a, a, a neat result that comes up on the regular cube where if you take a sequence of terms, terms and you repeat them, you'll eventually bring the cube back to solved. Uh, so it's just one of those sort of cube theory laws. It's just something that's true about a Rubik's cube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a sequence of moves. I'm gonna do the right side twice and then the top side twice. And that's my sequence, but I'm gonna keep repeating that until the cube comes back to solved. So right side twice, top side twice, right side twice, top side twice. And note for a second, we have kind of a cool pattern here. We've done the move three times so far. Right side twice, top side twice, that's our fourth. Right twice, top twice, that's our fifth. Right twice, top twice, that's our sixth. And we come back to solved. So um, this is a useful way actually of creating your own algorithms. Um, it's so the technical term is it's called the order of a permutation, but really all you wanna do is pick a sequence of moves and keep repeating them until the cube is done and count how many repetitions it took. So we counted that there were six. Now it's often, not always, but it's often the case that if it takes six turns to solve, cut that number in half, three, and then doing that move three times will often be an interesting case. And that's back to that pattern we saw. So I'm going to say right side twice, top twice, that's one. Right side twice, top twice, that's two. Right side twice, top twice, that's three. So we're halfway done. If I were to do this three more times, the cube would be solved. But notice right now, I actually have kind of a cool pattern. So I've taken this edge here and that edge there, and I've swapped them. I've taken this edge here and that edge there, and I've swapped them. But if I were to sort of cover these up for a second, that looks, uh, sort of if you can pretend that you don't see these colors, that looks an awful lot like the 4x4 parity case, where just this edge and that edge are swapped. So that means we're going to use something like this, right twice, top twice, right twice, top twice, right twice, top twice. We're going to use something like that on the 4x4. So let's take a look at that again. So. What I want to do first is let's just show you what happens if we just kind of do the same idea. So I can do actually right twice, top twice on these outer sides like this, and I'll make the same pattern. So I'll actually get the edges swapped here and here, but I'll also swap them there and there. So let me do that three more times. That's one more, twice more, three times more, and now back to solve. But what I want to do this time is instead of turning the outer right side, I want to turn the inner right side. So let's just see what happens right now. So we'll say right twice, top twice, right twice, top twice, right twice. Now I normally would do top twice again, but I'm actually not gonna do top twice because this is already something that's worth noting. On the actual top layer, so all the way across the side here, I've got an edge block there and an edge block there that are swapped. But I've also messed up some of these centers here. So the centers are sort of goofed up, but what is useful though is the fact that my edges are swapped the way I want them. If I were to cover the centers up, it would look like that permutation parity case. Okay, so um, now I would have ended with top twice, right twice, top twice. Notice if I just keep repeating, I'll eventually bring it back to solved. So what I want to look at now is, okay, we did something where we got almost the effect we want, but we ended up messing up with the centers. So let's just look at what happens if we do that same move on the centers only. Uh, the centers sort of mean these like inner slices. So I wanna see, what if I do right twice, inner top twice? 
right twice, inner top twice. Okay, this is kind of interesting. I've got a bar here that's swapped and a bar on the back that's swapped. Let's keep going, right twice, inner top twice, right twice, inner top twice. And then now, notice from right here, I actually have what looks like the case that I had before, but I don't have the edges on the top swap. So those are actually still green, but before they were blue and green. So uh, you kind of had like a number seven sort of on this side before, but if these were blue, it would look like a seven again. So let's see what's, what happens if I continue. Right twice, top twice, right twice, top twice. Okay, so we're starting to get some useful things that we can look at here. So another sort of variation I want to look at here is this. I want you to look at what happens if I do, um, actually, no, that, that's not necessary. Let's just kind of go into combining these. So the combination, sometimes it's useful to just do two different algorithms like right next to each other, basically. So here's the example of what I want to show you for that. If I do right twice, top twice, right twice, top twice, right twice. What I've done is I've created that case where I have the parity that I wanted, the, the permutation parity case. I've swapped what looks like this edge and this edge. And remember really on a four by four, these are actually different pieces. But if I'm thinking of it like a three by three, that's the white blue edge and that's the white green edge. They're now swapped. But then I've got these centers swapped. But I saw from earlier that if I, I can solve that center case, if I do right twice, inner top twice, right twice, inner top twice. And that puts the centers back to where they were. And notice I've actually just invented, <laughs> invented a uh, permutation parity case. So let's kind of go over that again. Let's do that again. So I'm going to do right twice, top twice, right twice, top twice, right twice. And then I get to this case where my centers are messed up. I have a bar here that's messed up and a bar there that's messed up. So now I'm going to do the case that solves that. And the case that solves that is right twice, inner top twice, right twice, inner top twice. Okay. So how's that useful? Now, the reason that's useful, it's a little hard to see without sort of seeing it written down, but the idea here is that there's a way to look at cube moves sort of written down on paper. There's a notation, there's a way you can write it down, but I just want to show you what's going to happen here. So we're going to do right twice, top twice, right twice, twice, top twice. I'm going to now do right twice. And then that's going to make my edges right. But then I'm going to have to solve my centers. And the first move I have to do when I solve my centers is also right twice. So I'm going to actually go back. I haven't done that last right twice yet. My next move that I'm going to do is this up twice, right twice, up twice. But it turns out I had actually done a U move that was an up twice kind of just before that. So here's what it ends up looking like if you combine it. Right twice, top twice right twice. I'm now actually going to do two up turns, which is really kind of like the tail end of that right twice, outer up twice, and the very beginning of this right twice, inner up twice done at the same time. And then I'm going to do right twice, up twice there. So again, it's a little easier to see if it's in notation. Um, so another thing I'm going to do, just one more perspective on, on why this works. I'm just going to kind of walk you through the actual parity algorithm, the one we just did, and just sort of give you an explanation about why that kind of works. So we saw it's just the combination of two cases. That case, which makes a seven, followed by this case, R2, U2, R2, U2, which fixes the centers back and you know, voila, I have parity. But uh, to solve it, here's what I want us to do. Again, we're, we're doing this like repetition of right twice and top twice as the main idea. So I'm gonna do right twice, top twice. Now, I know I need to do another right twice and then top twice, but what I'm going to do is I also want to start paying attention to what's happening to the centers. So I'm going to do a right twice, and now this time I have to do this top twice, but I'm going to pull double layers, and I'm going to show you why in a second. So I pulled two layers, and then that made this sort of double band going across here. But I want you to notice what happens to the centers when I do my next right twice. So notice I have a blue band and a green band. If I do right twice, I still have a blue band and a green band. Same thing on the back, green and then blue. They're sort of the swapped colors of each other. So the reason that happens is because of the type of symmetry you have right now. So this blue, if I do a right twice, I'm going to keep my finger on that blue. If I turn this side, that blue is going to trace up to here and it's going to trace up to there. So notice that the, the pieces that are on the top here 
on the front side. When I do a right twice, they end up on the bottom here on the back side. And it's the same way the other round. The pieces that are on the top of the back side, if I do a right twice, trace my finger around, they end up on the bottom of the front side. So I've actually made a way that I can do a right turn and change the top and the bottom without changing the centers at all. So I do that, and then the very last turn is just to realign that top side slice. So, okay, so one last time, the parity algorithm is right twice, top twice, right twice, double top twice, right twice, just this inner side twice. And then that's how you do your permutation parity case. All right, everybody, thanks for watching.